<laughs> yeah, I think uh, after all these games, I've dislocated or broken each one of my fingers. So, uh, yeah, like you said, it's fitting that I play my 300th with some type of uh, injury to my finger. Did you dislocate it at all or did you just jar it? What did you do? No, I thought it was dislocated, tried putting it back in. Uh, and he said, no, it's not dislocated, it's just more of a jar. So um, I'll go see, you know, the physio shortly, but I'm sure it'll be all cleared and good to go by Sunday. Beautiful. Um, obviously 300 for yourself, uh, not all here at the Cats, but um, you've pretty much done it all in in your career. Where does this sort of rate as, a, uh, as an achievement? Uh, to be honest, I was completely oblivious to the milestone until our media guy made me aware of it about a week or two ago. So I think milestone games are one of those things you appreciate probably more so in retirement, being able to achieve so many games. But one thing I'm proud of is the amount of being able to do uh, with the Wildcats. You know, I always pr wanted to be a one club player. Obviously that was taken away when West Sydney folded, but to be able to play the large majority of my career here in Perth, where I now call home, 10th season, it's been incredible and something I'm proud of. Do you have any family making the trip across to New Zealand? It's a unique time slot as well. So <laughs> does, it, does it make it harder for a family man like yourself? Yeah, um, oh, look, it, to be honest, my wife, couldn't even make it. She's 36, 36 weeks, 37 weeks pregnant. <laughs> so it was a no-brainer. She stayed home, but I've actually got my mum, dad, uh, some cousins, uh, all coming in for the Cairns game the following weekend. So it'll be my 301st game, but it'll be nice to have some family in the stands. Did Milestone be uh, any sort of inspiration for teammates to get the job done against the Breakers? Oh, I, oh, look, it, it's nice. People will shake your hand before the game and say congratulations. But it's just one of those things that, you know, you recognise at the time, but you'd like to think the motivation is just to get that win, you know, to try and get second, try and put more pressure on Sydney in that top spot. So I don't think my 300th will be any added motivation. But regardless, hopefully we get the win. When you look back on your career, who taught you to play the defensive style that you, that you play with? Uh, I think, you know, from my early days in Gloucester as an eight or nine year old, we always played for pressing coaches. And then I had a, a coach by the name of Vicky Sams as a 15 year old playing for Lake Macquarie down in the Hunter Valley. She was all about picking up full court, working your two fatigue uh, and that pride of not being the reason that someone scored or letting your teammates down. And, and so, yeah, it's probably been ingrained from a young age, but Vicky in particular stands out. So when someone at that age gets into your head and it stays in your head as well, she must have had a real influence on you. Yeah, she's one of the best coaches I've ever had. Um, you know, my dad was knocking off work at 5pm, driving me an hour and a half each way to Lake Macquarie to train twice a week during the weekday and then again on weekends, which meant mum essentially was a single mother of four to my siblings, you know, two, three, four nights a week. So the sacrifices my parents make, that's probably more so what I recognise when I get to go and achieve things like this, is the things they did early in my career when I was just a, a young pup playing a sport I loved, but the amount of time they spent in a car getting me to places to train or play is just incredible. When did you recognise that your defensive capability was going to take you a long way? Uh, I never really had a moment where I stopped and thought this is my niche in the game. I was fortunate enough to have some really good coaches along the way and you know I quit basketball for a year as a 15 year old. Rob Beveridge, a guy I didn't know at the time, he called me up and convinced me that if I quit rugby league that day he'll give me a scholarship to the New South Wales Institute of Sport and when you play, as if, at least when I was playing as a 15 year old, I played it just because I enjoyed sport regardless of what I was playing. Uh, but he was the first coach that sat me down and said he believed if I worked hard, made some sacrifices, some things go my way that there could be you know, university degree out of it and go on to play professionally and it kind of lit the fuse to set new goals which in, you know, included playing in the NBL and winning championships. It's a fair sliding doors moment isn't it? Yeah it really was, I'm, I'm glad he first and foremost made the call. I'm glad Dad had no problem jumping in a car and driving me to an hour away to the nearest McDonald's. Uh, and I'm glad Bevo took the gamble on me and it's paid dividends. And, you know, he started as a coach, but now he's a lifelong friend. Could you ever have envisaged yourself playing rugby league when you look back now instead of basketball? <laughs> no, the amount of injuries I've had playing what's apparently a non-contact sport, I can only imagine what would have happened in rugby league. But I was a passionate Newcastle Knights supporter back then. I still am, but I'm glad I went down the route of basketball. So is it fair to say uh, Bryce Cotton might be risk? Uh, to be honest, I haven't actually spoken to him. In, in the weight room, he looks pretty good. Uh, yeah, I, I, I honestly have no idea. He's as tough as they come, so if he thinks he's good to go, I could see him out there on the court. But, you know, he's our MVP. You don't want to take any risks. But, uh, yeah, hopefully he's boarding the plane with us to Auckland. Is he one of those rare players that just gets a free reign as in instead of in doing a training session to tick it off? If he says he's right to go, do you trust him? Uh, no, to be honest. Uh, a lot of players will say they're right to go. 
uh, but until they prove that they're physically able, uh, you know, he'd be willing, but whether he's able is another thing, and you've got to take that answer out of his control sometimes because players are going to always put their hand up and say, no, I'm good to go. The last thing you want is something that's very minor turning into something more serious, especially in the back end of the career, so back end have, of the season. You'd have to do a training tomorrow then to, to convince Trevor and the, and the staff. Yeah, you'd have to see him out there running around, uh, getting some minutes under his legs, testing it out, uh, and hopefully we see that tomorrow. How about the flight schedule with Cairns uh, and then back here and leaving and then a nine o'clock start. I mean, that'd be an early start for you on Sunday morning to get to the arena, wouldn't it? Yeah, we probably won't be checked in uh, and getting to the hotel until around 1 a.m. And so as we, we spoke to our manager, put through our dinner orders, so dinner will be at 1 a.m. And then our breakfast slash pre-game will be around, you know, 11 a.m. local time. So we're not trying to adjust to the time. We're trying to stay on Perth time. But in saying that, it's not often you wake up. And we train at this time, so that's OK. But I can't remember ever having such close times in landing and then going to play. Okay, on the last time with Milestone, so 300, tick that box. Any chance of it 350? I'd like to think there's a chance of 350. If you said 400, I'd tell you <laughs> there's no chance of that. But uh, yeah, I'm, I'm thoroughly enjoying my basketball. Um, you know, we'll take it as it comes by the end of the season. But yeah, I would love to go around again, that's for sure. So it's something you look back on more than you know, the end of your career. But when you look back on the actual career right now and what you've achieved, how, how much enjoyment have you had, how much significance, all, everything you've done, do, do you surely you have a time to smell the roses at this point and think, geez, I've been. Had a yeah, a lot of my friends and former teammates who are now retired, they always tell you, enjoy it while you can. It's, you know, it's the best job in the world. But I think I've been fortunate enough to really enjoy it in the moment. And I am grateful for the opportunity I have each and every day. And I don't roll out of bed and I'm super excited to go train. But I love rocking up to work and seeing you know, my best mates, get that grind of trying to do whatever it takes to get a win. And that high on a weekend where you can win, whether it's here at RAC Arena or on the road. So. I know I'm very fortunate to play, have a job that I absolutely love. Uh, and yeah, the, the mateships are the things that stand out the most, but then, you know, the Olympics or the, the championships are right up there, but it's, it's the mateship that gets you out of bed.